constantly frustrating aspects of our research is whenever we quote something from a Chinese source, it disappears. Uh, and typically the Chinese government will then say, we didn't say it, it didn't happen. Uh, we've archived everything, so you can see what we've quoted, but it's, it's not available in China because of the systematic takedown. What, what the China runs four transplant registries in, in four different locations in, in, in China uh, for heart, lung, uh, liver, and kidney. The uh, three of them are in mainland China. The liver uh, transplant registry was in Hong Kong, and initially the, the aggregate data for that registry uh, were public, and, and we started putting them, and they cut down public access uh, to that. And so uh, Chinese the government should be providing death penalty statistics, should be providing access to the aggregate data for transplant registry. Uh, at the uh, China comes uh, up uh, at the United Nations Universal Periodic Review every four years, as did uh, as every other country. Uh, in, in China came up uh, in February 2009 and again in October 2013. In, in both of those reviews, many countries asked China to uh, ask uh, uh, to make public its death penalty statistics. In 2009, China said explicitly, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, this time, after the date, they said just, well, we'll see. But they certainly haven't done so. The uh, United Nations uh, rapporteur on torture and religious intolerance and UN Committee on Torture all got into this issue. And they asked China to explain the discrepancy between the volume of transplants, which are so high, and, and the discrepancy of its explained sources, which are death uh, uh, penalty prisons part of a volume that could not possibly account for the uh, volume of transplants. To give you an idea, so there's uh, approximately 10,000 transplants a year, and, and given the vagaries of the, and the limitations of the death penalty, my own estimate is that in order to supply uh, organs at the rate of 10,000 a year from death penalty prisoners alone, you would need 100,000 prisoners sent to death and then executed every year in China to supply that volume. And I mean, China leads the world in, in death penalty volume, but it's nowhere at that level now. Most high estimates from NGOs from 5,000, 6,000, nowhere uh, near 100. So uh, we then get to the European Parliament resolution, uh, which calls uh, 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 last December, calls on the People's Republic of China to end the practicing of harvesting organs for business of conscience of members of religious and ethnic minorities. I should say that uh, although I have focused on uh, Falun Gong alone, uh, the uh, other researchers have looked at other prisoners of conscience and come to the conclusion, and Ethan Gutman in particular has done this, so come to the conclusion that there are other prisoners of conscience that are being killed, in particular Uyghurs, Tibetans, and Eastern uh, uh, Eastern Lightning House, uh, house Christians. Uh, the numbers are much tinier, of course, than the Tibetans and Uyghurs, it's much regional, but it, it, it's, it's regional, but uh, there are other prisoners of conscience uh, who are victims, which is why the uh, resolution that the uh, European Parliament raised the way it does. So the resolution then calls for EU and member states to raise the issue of organ harvesting in China, recommends that the Union and member states publicly defend organ transplant abuse in China, and raise this issue among the citizens traveling to China. It calls for full and transparent investigation by the EU and the organ transplant practice in China and for the prosecution of those engaged in ethical practices. And, and then the resolution calls on the Chinese authority to respond thoroughly to the request of the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, uh, asking the, the Chinese government to explain the sources of organs and to, to allow them to conduct an independent investigation of organ transplant of the practice in China. And I should say that the UN Committee of China is a signatory to the UN Committee Against Torture, and, and so they have to report to the UN Committee, uh, they, they're a signatory to the UN Convention Against Torture, and they have to report to the UN Committee Against Torture, and they did report to the Committee, and there were pictures that the Committee itself asked for an independent investigation into organ transplant abuse in China. And, and, and the uh, European resolution also called for immediate release of prisoners in uh, the conscience of China, including Falun Gong. Well, the, the Chinese mission in Brussels, the Chinese government mission in Brussels, the, the European uh, Union issued a short response to the resolution. They said, and this is the first sentence, uh, the allegations the Chinese government harvesting organs from Falun Gong practitioners are sheer fabrications of Falun Gong culture. 
Yes. Well, let, let me say uh, a couple things about that uh, one sentence. One is that the conclusion of the government harvesting of uh, organs from Falun Gong practitioners does not come from Falun Gong practitioners. Those who have done research and reached the result that practitioners of, practitioners of Falun Gong are being killed for their organs are not, for the most part, practitioners of Falun Gong. Practitioners of uh, Falun Gong are the victims, but not the authors of the research about the victimization. There was a woman in, uh, named Annie who made a statement in uh, 2006 that her husband had been harvesting corneas of Falun Gong practitioners in the future. Annie's not a Falun Gong practitioner. I'm not a Falun Gong practitioner. Um, David Kilgore, uh, my co-author, is not a Falun Gong practitioner. Tom Treasure, who's a doctor, he wrote a, 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 a corroborative article in 2000 uh, the Royal Society, uh, the Journal of the Royal Society of Medicine in the UK. He's not a Falun Gong practitioner. Uh, Kirk Allison is a professor at the University of Minnesota Medical Facility, the faculty has produced corroborative research. He's not a Falun Gong practitioner. Ethan Gutman, an American journalist who uh, I mentioned earlier, is uh, producing a, a book this year on this issue. He's not a Falun Gong practitioner. Arnie Schwartz, who's uh, done research on this issue in Switzerland, uh, is not a Falun Gong practitioner. In, in this, this book, uh, there, are, there are 12 contributors. Ten of them are not Falun Gong practitioners. Well, okay, that's who we're not. Uh, let me say a bit about who we are. We who have produced this research uh, are independent. Independent of Falun Gong, independent of the, of, of the government of China, uh, and independent of each other. We are disinterested. We have nothing to gain or to lose by standing opposed to human rights violations against practitioners of Falun Gong in China. Uh, we are all human rights advocates and activists. Our only motivation in exposing violations is to end them and bring perpetrators to justice. Uh, I also sh should say, uh, something about Falun Gong. Although uh, I'm not a Falun Gong practitioner, I've met many Falun Gong practitioners all, all, all around the world, which is I've been speaking on this issue now for about seven years, and they are a disparate group. Uh, originally they were Chinese, now they are members of virtually every nationality in the world. They have only one thing in common, uh, the practice of Falun Gong. Falun Gong is a set of exercises with a spiritual foundation. Because the words uh, Falun and Gong are Chinese, not English, the nature of Falun Gong is not clearly conveyed by its name. I suggest that whenever you hear the word Falun Gong used in a sentence, replace those words with the word set of exercises with the spiritual foundation, or merely as the uh, set of exercises and see if the sentence makes any sense. In addition to saying what Falun Gong, uh, Gong is, I should also say what Falun Gong is not. It's certainly not a cult. To call a set of exercises, any exercise is a cult is more than just unfair to the exercises, whatever they may have to be. It's linguistic nonsense. Whatever a cult is, good or evil, it's surely more than indifferent from exercise. Nor is Falun Gong an organization. There are a variety of individual organizations which various Falun Gong volunteers have formed. However, to practice Falun Gong does not require joining anything or paying anything. To be a practitioner of Falun Gong requires no money and no membership. The Falun Gong exercises, like any exercises, can be done by anyone, anytime, anywhere. A person can start the exercises when he or she wants, do them as often or as regularly as he or she is inclined to do, and stop whenever it's key or she feels like. Most of the Chinese mission statement in Brussels is just in the time of the practice of Falun Gong. The, uh, aside from the fact that the attack is misplaced, it's in a logical manner of dealing with the issue. Shifting the source of the evidence and analysis from qualified, experienced, independent researchers to victims and then attacking the character of the victims is not an answer to the evidence and analysis. Even if the Communist Party were to attack me and my fellow researchers, something they have an occasion done by Poland and China, that too would not be an answer to the work we produce. The work has to stand as well on its merits, not on the character of the authors of the research. The Chinese mission response is a mere 130 words. 
two thirds of the text is focused on uh, on an attack on Falun Gong. Uh, only one third actually responds uh, to the evidence. Now, although the Chinese mission in Brussels does it's not intended that way, they very respond to evidence of dispute. For one reason that Falun Gong practitioners in China are forced by the organs, as I've indicated, is the Communist Party vilification, uh, of which the Chinese mission response provides an example and an insight. Now, it's all very well for us outside China to dismiss, to dismiss as so, as just so much nonsense the attacks on the practice of Falun Gong. For those inside China who do not have easy access to contrary information, these attacks are far more insidious. They become a vehicle in themselves for the killing of Falun Gong for their organs, providing a large part of the motivation for the crime. So the one statement that the Chinese government mission does make about the evidence is uh, they say that in 2006 many Chinese and foreign journalists and representatives of diplomatic missions from China joined an investigative tour and visited the alleged place. The findings of the tour are telling proof that the claims of Falun Gong are complete lies. Now, uh, the statement doesn't say what the alleged place is, and uh, as I've indicated, our evidence uh, is that uh, the killing of Falun Gong practitioners for their organs is happening throughout China and, and not just in one place. But I, I'm assuming when they talk about the alleged place, they're talking about Sujiaki, because that was the place that Annie said uh, her husband had been working in. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, there were some visits uh, to Sujiaki after Annie made the statement. Annie said her husband had been working in that hospital uh, harvesting organs uh, from December 2001 to October 2003. She made her statement in March 17, 2006. The first visit of the U.S. consulate to Sujiat was March 22, 2006, five days later. And there were subsequent visits to Sujiat by others, which uh, the Chinese government in the link refers to. Well, the absence of evidence at a crime site, years after the crime, as I said, uh, because Anne's husband staunched in October 2003, it is not evidence the crime did not happen. Even if one waits days after the crime, because we have at, at, at least the five day gap, uh, giving the criminal prolonged, unhampered, unsupervised access to the site and every opportunity to remove all traces of the crime, is also evidence, not evidence the crime did not happen. As well, uh, if the Chinese government is looking at what the U.S. government said in 2006, and they did say we went to the site in 2006 and we didn't find anything on the site at that time, when we went, uh, the Chinese government should refer to what the U.S. government is saying now. Uh, in, in May 2012, their, their country report to the human rights refers to uh, reported instances of organ harvesting, particularly from Falun Gong practitioners and, and Uyghurs. Now, the, uh, the, the fact that they found nothing in 2006 is, is inconclusive, and also this reference in 2012 in itself is not conclusive, but has to be taken seriously because they wouldn't have put it in, in the report if there was no indication of this seriousness. As well, uh, as well uh, there was a... a um, a letter signed by 106 uh, members of Congress in October 2012 asking the State Department to release information uh, given by Wang Lijun to the uh, American Constitution uh, in Chengdu when he attempted to fetch in February 2012. Now, uh, explaining the significance of that would take me more time than I, I have right now, and I, I'm going to uh, not tell you about who Wang Lijun is or what that reflection is about. But, uh, it, the, uh, but it's all in the written text, and what, and just in summary, what it, ha it is about is uh, Falun Gong and, and uh, the, the killing to their organs. And uh, the fact that 106 congressmen was signed onto that is itself a subject of sound. So let me just say a few sentences by way of conclusion uh, about from that. Uh, where, where does this all lead to Finland? There are, there are many practical things one can do. So some of them lay out in the resolution of the European Parliament, but this forum itself is a good start. 
Shedding the light on an abuse which the Communist Party of China makes every effort to deny and cover up has to be the beginning of any of that abuse. Well, I certainly hope that Finland does more on the issue than just hosting this forum, I have to commend Finland for doing so. Finland is the first country in Europe to follow up on the European Revolution through this forum. Uh, I welcome this Finnish leadership and hope it presages even further Finnish initiatives in the future. Thank you very much.